Good evening. Hope all of you are doing well. Tonight we're learning Masech Yuma, Daf Ayin Beis. We're going to be starting about 12 lines up or so from the bottom of the page on Ayin Aleph Amid Beis. And we're in the middle of our discussion of thread counts. Uh, we were discussing the other day how many um, strings there are within sheish, within linen. And now we're going to be continuing our discussion discussion of what the Torah meant with the word mosh zar. So again, we're starting about, uh, I don't even count, 15 lines or so, 12 lines from the bottom. Mosh zar shmona minola. The Brisa told us earlier, yesterday we saw this, that the Brisa indicated that when the Torah uses the word mosh zar, it means that there's an eight thread count to each thread. Minola, how do we know this is true? So it says the Torah, as far says the Gemara quoting the Torah, the Yalif, Mashzar, Mashzar, Mi Parochas. The Pasuk says Mashzar over there. And by Parochas, we have Mashzar also. Malahalan Chut Esrim Arba. Just like by the Parochas, we know the thread count is 24, the Mari Makomos, of which we will see a little bit later. Afkan Esrim Arba here too. By the uh, by the things that grow on the bottom, the things that are woven on the bottom of the meal, they're also 24 count. To have a kolchad vechad tamne. There are three different types of uh, there are three different types of materials. That's what the Pasuk indicates. The three different types of materials are Techeles, Argamon, and Tolas Shani. And there's uh, three of those. And we know that the total is 24. So just do the math. It must be that there are eight threads per count. That's what the word mashzar must, must teach us. And therefore, mashzar must be eight. Ten lines or so from the bottom of Ayin Allah from Bez says the Gemara Venelaf Mechoshen Ve'ephod. Maybe. Instead of learning that the word mashzar means eight from the world of parochas, maybe we should learn it from the world of choshen ve'efod, where we said in the brayse malahalon esrim u'shmona that they were made out of out of a twenty-eight count of threads afkan esrim u'shmona. Maybe we should say that mashzar means twenty-eight, just like it did by choshen ve'efod. So it says the Gemara, nope, you can't do that. The Gemara says three lines before the wide lines on the bottom of Ayin Aleph and Mebez, done in, we are allowed to learn one thing from another. Done in, Dover Shalom Ne'emar Bozahab, Mi Dover Shalom Ne'emar Bozahab. We can learn Mashzar from the uh, from the Rimonim, from the decorative parts that were at the bottom of the Me'il, no problem, because neither of them have gold. They are common in that neither of them have gold, but they're made out of fabric. However, La Afuke, we should not be, we should be excluding the, the, uh, the capacity to compare from Mashar to the world of Choshen Ve'efo, Shinam Ar Bozahab. So says the Gemara, therefore, um, we, should, uh, we should assume that we're going to learn from the world of, um, that we should be learning from the world, not of Zahab, but from the Me'il itself. Says the Gemara, Adar Abba, done in Beged Mi Beged. Forget about having gold being your common denominator. We should be learning from one garment to another. La fuke parochas de ohelu. The me'il and anything that's mashzar, at least those are begotten. But you're extrapolating from the world of parochas. The parochas is a kli based on mikdash. It's a, it's a totally, it's an ohel. It's a totally different entity. There's, therefore, says the Gemara, that's a big problem. Uh, the Gemara doesn't uh, doesn't know what to do with this. And at the very first of the long lines at the bottom of Ayin Aleph and the Gemara says, Eli, you're right. Done in me avnate. We learn that the word mashzar is eight from the world of avnate. And what is the comparison? The done in beged vidover shalone emar bozav. It first has the status of being a beged, and second, it has no gold. And that we learn from me beged vidover shalone emar bozav. So we learn them from garments that are similar. We learn them the me'il, and we learn it from the avnate. Those are similar. The ain done, and however, it is not appropriate to extrapolate to try and learn what the thread count is of mashzar, to learn it from another area. Ve'ain done in davar she'ain bo zahav, mi davar she'yesh bo zahav, but not to learn it from the choshen ve'efod, which do have zahav. And therefore, says the Gemara, we now know with clarity that the mashzar, the word mashzar means eight threads, and we learn that from the world of avnate. And then the Gemara says, four lines from the bottom of Mari Amar Ta'asenuksiv. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi's four lines, five lines from the bottom of Rashi's. Dibra Maschal Ta'asenuksiv. The Pasuk says, you shall make it. Bechoshen. That's a Pasuk unique to Choshen. Rashi continues, Lefichach ein lemeidin mimenu. It was made Ta'asenu. It was made very uniquely. And therefore, when you look back in the Gemara, four lines from the bottom of Mari says, when the, when the Torah says, Ta'asenuksiv, Ta'asenu lazeh velo la'acher. You can't learn from there anyways. You can't learn from the from the, from the Choshen whether or not it has gold because that was a unique, uh, a uniquely made garment. 
Ravashi, Amar Ve'asisa, because you have a different problem, which is that it says Ve'asisa. What's the drush on the Pasuk of Ve'asisa? She'yihyu kol asuyos shavos, that everything has to be equal. Ve'hechi navid, how else could you have made it? If you want to say navid, tulasa de asara, asara, if the three types of fabric, the tulas shani, the tcheles argaman and the tulas shani, if each of them were made out of 10, then havalu tulas, and we would have been left with a 30 car, 30, uh, thread count, a 30 count of threads, and that's not the sheet of the Gemara. The Gemara says it's, it, we, we were trying to say maybe it's 28, like the Chosh and Ve'efot, but we can't. It has to be even. And therefore, says the Gemara, Navi trade the Tisha, Tisha, Vechad, De Asara. If you want to say that maybe by the Tchelis and the Argamon, it's nine each, which is 18. And by the Tolas Shani, maybe that one will do 10, and nine plus nine is 18, plus 10 is 28. And therefore, we got to our 28, and maybe Mashtar also means 28. Says the Gemara, you're not allowed to do that because what was the drush that we just saw in the name of Ravashi? That each of the uh, the allocations of the number of thread count has to be even within each type of thread. It's They have to be the same. The Torah says you should make them. Each of the thread counts of each of the three materials have to be the same. And therefore, anything times three is not going to equal 28. So what are we left for? We're back to 24. So eight times three is 24 like we started. And therefore, we have the conclusion of our Gemara that Mashar is a reference to the number of eight thread count. Then the, then the Gemara moves on on the bottom line of Ayin Aleph Mebez. What about the Me'il? The Bryce that we learned yesterday said that the Me'il was Shnei Masar. That the Me'il was a 12 thread count. The Me'il was the, the, the coat that he wore. Minalan. How do we know that that's true? Says the Torah, Dechsiv. Be'asis says Ha'me'il Ha'efod. You have to make the meal of the ephod, and you have to make it klil techeles, top of ayin beis aleph. What does it mean klil? Rashi says gedil. The in gedil pachos mishnayim. It has to be. Um, it has to be a gedil. It has to be a, a, a twist of some kind of. Um, uh, of some kind of strings, and it has to be at least two. So, and the word paroches, the word techeles exists by paroches and exists by meil. Malaholan, just like by, by the parochas, each thread count was six. Afkan shisha, so to here, by the me'il, each thread count is six. And the way that Rashi works out the math is that if each thread count is six, but you need kleel, you need it to be doubled, so six times two is 12. What was our question? We said, me'il shnei masar menelan, how did we get to 12? It's two strings, each of which were, uh, were made out of six. Wonderful, six times two is 12. Perfect. Says the Gemara, it's nice that you're learning it out from the parochas, but remember, we're talking about the me'il. Can't you learn it out from the remonim that were at the bottom of the meal? Says the Gemara, the Rimunav. Why don't we learn it from the hem of the very garment you're wearing? The thread count of the meal we want to say is 12. What if I could learn it from the from the Rimonim that were stitched on, that were embroidered at the bottom? Malahalan Shmona Afkan Shmona. We said earlier that the uh, that the thread count of the design at the bottom was an eight count of thread. So maybe we should learn from there. Says the Gemara, we can't. Done in Klimi Klib and done in Klimi Tachshit. Because the halachic status of the Rimon is that it was a Tachshit, therefore we cannot extrapolate from the garment it's, itself to the Tachshit. Says the Gemara, Kli. What are you worried about the cleave for? Adarabah. Done in gufo mi gufo. You should be learning them one from another. Forget about the fact that it's a cleave. It's all the same garment. He's wearing a me'il. At the bottom of the me'il is the rimon. And you went to the parochas to go learn the thread count for me'il. If the, you're not sure what the thread count is for the me'il, look at the bottom and see what they did. We know it was eight. We know the thread count for the rimon was eight. So why didn't you just look at the same garment and say the top is, is eight, the bottom is eight, the top should also be eight. So says the Gemara, you're right, absolutely correct. And the Gemara acquiesces to this. And you're right, this is how, where we got to our principle that we saw the other day in our Mishnah. Lishar Begadim is actually a bride. So Lishar Begadim, Shalom Namar Bahen Shesh, that whenever we have a scenario where there isn't a preordained set of thread count, we always assume that it's Shesh. That would be true here. What about the parochas? This was also quoted from the Brisa yesterday. We're tearing apart that Brisa step by step. I in Beis Madal of seven, eight lines down. Parochas Esrim Arba. Everyone agrees that the thread count of the parochas was twenty-four. Dalid. There were four types of threads, and Deshisa Shisa. Each one of them was a six thread count. Six times four is twenty-four. Lodina Velodina. What does Lodina Velodina mean? Take a look at a beautiful Rashi. Fourth line of Rashi. Lodina Velodina. Ain Suffolk Ve'ir Or Bedover. There's no judge and there's no judgments. No one argues with this. There's nothing to discuss. Lace Manda Pali, as we say, this is 100% the case. Please God, Besam Mikdash Lishi, everyone will know that the thread count without any questions of the paruches is 24 with each of the four types of wool or types of materials getting a thread count of, of six each, six times four is 24. What about the Choshen Ve'efod? There, the Brisa told us the other day that it was Esrim Vishmona. How do we know that that's true? Minala, that it's a count of Esrim Vishmona. So this is a little bit more complicated. The Gemara says, the Pasuk writes, a long quote from the Pasuk, 
Tchelis Ragaman, the Tolash Shani, the Sheish Mashzar. Arba de Shisa, she said there's four materials there's Tchelis, there's Argaman, there's Tolash Shani, and there's Sheish Mashzar. That's four materials. Arba de Shisa, Shisa, um, four times four, and each of them is six. That's 24. Esther and Arba. How do we get to 28? Because in addition to those four threads, we also added in gold. And how did we do that? Zahab Arba. What's 24 plus 4? 28. That was our question. We said, how do we get the Chosh and Nefo to 28? Of the actual um, fabric, when we talk about Tchelis, V'argaman, Tola, Shani, V'sheish, those four garments, each of those were, were a six count. Good. Good to go. That's 24. The last four is made out of gold. And therefore, says the Gemara, a third of the way down, Ha'eser and Utmanya. That's 28. Mm-hmm. Says the Gemara, Ve'em Azov, Nami Shisho. Well, why break the mold? Why did you stop at 28? If, if all the threads, if the trellis were all a six count, why did you say that the gold is going to be, uh, it's going to be a four count? That's very strange. So says the Gemara, because the aim is of Nami Shisha, we should also say that maybe the gold thread is six. Nope, you can't. You need to cut the psilim. You need to cut a reference here to gold in this case. You need to cut the psilim. Psilim is plural. You need to cut the two psilim, which means that each of the two is going to be cut, generating four. That's what the pasuk means. That means kitsi psilim. Psil psilim. You're going to take you're going to take one psil and make it into psilim, and therefore you're going to end up with four harekan dalit. So therefore, we can't say that the gold is going to be like the other threads, and that it should be a six count. It has to be a four count because the pasuk says that that's how it's going to split. Says the gemara in the name of Ravashi. Ravashi Amar Amar Kral Asos Pesocha Tchelis Uvesocha Argaman. He says, what about the Tchelis and the Argaman based on the pasuk and Chomesh Hechi Navi? What should we do? So Navid Arba de Tre Tre. In regards to the four fabrics, we make each of them two that come. That brings us to eight. Havalahut manya. That's going to be an eight thread count. Good. Navi tre de tre tre. And if we take two of them, two each, so then you have uh, your eight times. Uh, you're going to have the eight, and then this is going to be um, this is going to be two times two. Tre de tre tre. The tre de chadhu. In order to get the gold to be uh, to be the right number, to be six as you posit, that's impossible because then you have to have the gold. Remember, the gold only comes in pairs of two. So if you have gold coming, gold coming in pairs of two, that's going to be four. You can't get to six with pairs of two. You need a pair of two, but it's not done that way. You want to save a trade the chad chad and one of the pairs. So then you have three pairs of two. That's not what the pasuk said. The pasuk says kitz says psilim. Says the that doesn't work for another reason as well. Ve'asisa halfway down on ayin beis medalev sheyu kol asu yosef shavos that all of the breakdowns of the gold have to be the same. And therefore you can't have two sections of two each. And then the next one is gonna be one section of two. That is an inconsistency that the Pasuk cannot tolerate. And therefore we cannot have it be the case. We cannot have it be the case that when it comes to the gold, that it's going to be six, it must therefore be four. And therefore there's, as it relates to the Choshen Ve'efo, there's four types of fabric. There's Tchelitz Argaman Tola Shani V'Sheish, that's four. Each of them is a six, a six braid, a six uh, thread count. That's 24. And because gold can't be six, it has to be four. So 24 plus four is 28. That's how the Choshen Ve'efo would get to their count. The Gemara is now going to go basically from here until the end of the daf today for a number of short agaritas, some of which are well known, some of which are not, all of which are beautiful. Says the Gemara, three lines, four lines before the wide lines. Amar Rechava, Amar of Yehuda, Hamekarea Bigde Kahuna Loke. Anyone who tears the bit the begadim of the coin gadol of a coin, excuse me, they will be loke. Shenemar Loi Karea should not be torn. Maski Floravacha Bar Yaakov. He says, wait one second. The Dilma Achi Kamarachmana. Maybe what the Torah is saying is as follows: Navid Le Safa. We should make it a lip. We should put a hem. Um, we should put a hem on it at the edge so that it doesn't fray, so that it won't tear. Not to say that there's an isser to tear it, but we're preparing, we're being smart. We don't want it to tear. It's a preventative measure to put in the hem, but it's not an isser to tear it, says the Gemara. Well, maybe that would have worked, but that's not what the Torah says. Miksiv with the shin, she lo yikarea. Think about the difference. You tell your child, don't do this. Or you tell your child, I'm trying to make it so that I'm going to prevent you from doing this. They're different. One is a tzivui of lo yikarea. But he says, that's what the Gemara is arguing. Miksiv she lo yikarea. Do we say we're putting in the hem so that it won't tear? No, that wasn't the Torah's tzivui. It says so that you don't tear it. So therefore we know that there's malkos for that, that there's an iser. If someone removes the choshen, the breastplate from the ephod, from its holder, the hamesir bade aron loke, anyone who removes the the poles of the Aaron, they will get Malkos as well. Because it says you cannot remove it, and it says you cannot remove it. Different languages for removing one for the Choshen from the Ephod, and one for the uh, the removal of the Badim by the um, by the Aaron. So it says the Gemara the same question. Hold on one second. 
when maybe when the Torah was saying just make sure that they're fixed in very tightly, make sure that they're they're put in properly. So that again, it's not that there's an iser of maybe it's just that we're gonna we're gonna tell you not to touch them so that they don't fall out. Says the Gemara, no, same question, same retort we said before. The shin wasn't there in the pasuk. The pasuk says lo yizach and lo yazur, not shelo yizach, so that it won't happen. And therefore, the Gemara rejects that, and we we maintain our start that there is an iser. We're three fourths of the way down, about ten lines from the bottom of the page. Rav Yosi, Rav Chanina, Rami Ksiv. He brought two psukim, one against another. First, in regards to the arun, it says betavos arun you abadim lo yaser mimenu. One pasuk says that the poles have to be in the arun. They cannot be removed. And then it says, but that they, they can move inside the rings. They just can't be re- removed from the rings. Haketzad says the Gemara, they were, uh, they were movable within the rings, but they couldn't be removed from the rings. You're able to slide the, the badim as necessary, but you were not allowed to take them out. That was That's the balance. It's not that they couldn't be moved a millimeter, a centimeter, an inch. It's just that they couldn't be removed. Tanya Nami Hachi, the Brysa writes, uh, exactly like this idea of mispark in the English button, seven, eight lines from the bottom. That the rings of the Aron should be inside, uh, should have poles in them. Maybe we would have thought that they can't have any movement at all. That they can be moved inside the tabos. I even huva es es padav. If they can be moved, yachal you nechnasin viyosin. Maybe they can be put in, and maybe they can be taken out. Says the Gemara, no, absolutely not. Tamal Rabbi Tabos are in your That the pasuk says they have to be there. Hakeitzad. How do we explain this seeming contradiction of psukim? Mispar kin be nishmatin. Just like we said. So the halacha is that please God, we should have the opportunity to see the aron. If you're the right person to touch it, we got to make sure you're the right person. You got to make sure you're a tahor para aduma. There's a lot to go through to get there, but please God soon. But under those circumstances. Circumstances, just make sure not to take them out of the pole. That would be a great way to, great way to go out. You know, all of a sudden you get everything back. You don't keep one of the halachos and boom. And we know the stories from Tanakh where people tried to catch the aron, as it were. The, the, the aron was no say as atzmo, so that we got to be very careful, of course. But the halacha is mispar ken ve'enishmat. Next halacha, four lines from the bottom. The gemara is not a halacha; it's a medrash. Says the gemara, Amar Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina Maidichsi. What does the pasuk mean when it says atzei shitim omdim that the cedar wood that was used was standing? For a few different pshatim. Number one, she omdim derech bilasan. They were positioned in a way as to how they grew, meaning the bottom of the tree was closer to the ground and the top of the tree was above the ground. Now they've been cut from the tree, but the orientation remained the same. Right? So that's how they would put up the wood. Another shot in the word omdin when it says that omdin shema'amidin es tzifuyan. There was hammered gold. It would hammer the gold and it would create its own indentations and grooves into the wood itself. It was amudin. It would hold up, the wood would hold up the hammered gold. We've lost our chance with the with this when the base of Mikdash falls. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi here in her margin, four lines from the bottom. Dibra Maschal Shema Shema Tomar Mishenignaz when the Aron was hidden. Avad Sivran. What does Avad Sivran mean? Shelo Yashuvu O that we will not get it back. Difficult language to understand, but that's what how Rashi explains it. Uvat El Sikuyan Masha Anu Sochin Bit Sofin Lehen that which we pine for, uh, we no longer have a chance. So therefore, it comes along the Torah to teach us the word Am. There will be a time where the Beis HaMikdash will be rebuilt, and uh, we should not lose our emotions in the past. We should still be hopeful for the future. As mentioned many times, we learned this here, in the, probably in this very room, maybe from Zoom, I don't know where we were at this time, uh, but we learned the Gemara Masech Shabbos that asks, says that one of the six questions that we will be asked, B'Shas Adin, a statement of Rava, is whether or not we were to peace of the Yeshua. Did we look forward to that? So it's the Ani Mamin B'Muna Shlema B'Vies HaMashiach, V'Achal B'Shis Mamea, even though things are delayed, Afal Pikain, we're still waiting. And that's the Hashkafa that's being presented here in the Gemara. Bottom line of Ayn Bez Madal, Fama Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina, what does the Pasuk mean when it says, as big day has Srod, the Sharais Bakodesh, the clothes of the Srod, the leftover clothes that will be served? What does the word leftovers mean? It says the Gemara, top of Ayn Bez Madbez, Umale Big Day Kihuna. If not for the fact that a Kaddish Baruch Hu gave us the Big Day Kihuna, Take a look at Rashi. Just please note there's no Tosos on this page. So this Rashi is in both columns. So this first Rashi we're looking at is on the top right column, which is normally Tosos. When the Kohanim would bring the Korbanos, then uh, the halacha is that uh, we get kapara, bar Hashem. The problem is if you don't know how to do the thread count, if you don't know how to make the begadim, then it's le'ikuva. You're not allowed to do the avodah, even if there's one thread missing from the thread count. If the parochas doesn't have the 24 count per thread, it has a 23 counts per thread. Well, that's a big problem. You're not allowed to do that. So therefore, says the Gemara, it's a big deal that we had the big day kihuna because ilmale big day kihuna. Without that, lo nishtaim yisonei shal yisrael sorry to poly. This is a metaphor. Sonei shal yisrael. 
uh, those who do sins who are in fact Jewish, the, that uh, there would be no Jews left over and there wouldn't even be a sorry to public, no one would be left. Because why would a Kurdish, without Kapara, even with Kapara, need sak with Panecha Kolchai, fine. But if certainly, certainly under the circumstances without it, we'd be in big trouble. So therefore, Baruch Hashem, that the Big Day Kahuna ever existed. Rib Shmuel Bar Nachmeni Amar the Bay Rib Shimon Tana that Rib Shmuel Bar Nachmeni quoting from Bay Rib Shimon and there he quotes a source from the Tana. The Godim Shegordin Osan Kibriyas and Miklehen that when they made the begadim of the coin gadol when they when they were done on the loom they came off ready to wear umisradin mehen klum but there was a little bit left over. Myhi what was left over? Rish Lakishamar Elu Maisa Machat there was a little bit of needlework to be done. Now we know of course that the the begadim of the coin gadol were Maisa Orig they were woven they were not. They were not like needled. They were woven like a weave, like you'd use with a warp and a whiff and a loom and the whole the whole normal thing that we talk about by Hilchos Shabbos. So here, what's the Maisa Macha? It says the Gemara, hang on one second. That does not work. We learned in the Gemara, Masech Hezvachim, Big De Kihuna, Ein Osa No So, Maisa Macha, Ela Maisa Orik, Shunemar, Maisa Orik, the Pasuk in Chumash says Maisa Orik. So you're not allowed to take a needle to the begadim of the coin God. It can only be a Maisa Orik, no needles. You can't just tie on buttons. It doesn't work that way. You're not allowed to do that. It has to be my story. Amar Abai, he answers eight lines down. I mean, Beis and Beis. How does Abai explain this? Lo nitzrach elo lebeis yad shelahem. He says no. You need to know a little bit more about the construction of the begadim of the coin. And the, the the way that it worked is that the the torso section of this was made on the loom, was made on the machine, quote unquote, was made on the on the on the weaving machine, and that would be ready to wear. However, the arms. The sleeves were not, and this is explicit in a brisa. What does Avayi say? Lo nitzchel al beis yad shalahem in regards to the sleeves. Kedatanya, the brisa writes beis yad shal big day kahuna ne aregas bifne atzma. The sleeves of the clothes of the kohanim, those were woven on their own, and then afterwards v'nid bekasim habeged, they were then stitched at the shoulder, like we have on our suits, like we have on our shirts. Our sleeves are a separate piece of fabric than the actual torso of our shirt. Everyone who is wearing a shirt in this room has the same exact thing. We all have a cut right here. It's always made that way because it falls nicer, but that's how they made it there as well. And the sleeve was long enough that it would fall down to the palms of their hands. Next section of the Gemara. Famously, explicitly, if, um, you know, written this way in the Torah, there were three different Aronos that were made for the Aron. And Sai Shel Eitz, the middle one was made out of wood and it was Tisha. It was nine Tefach deep. Pnimi, the one, the gold that went inside this nine, this uh, this wood box, the one that went inside that was made out of gold was Shimona. It was only eight tall. And Chitzon, the outer one into which both of the boxes went, the largest box that contained both the wood and the smaller gold box, Chitzon, Asara Vimashu. It was 10 tall plus a little bit. Says the Gemara Vahatanya, Achada Sarumashu. We have a Brysa that says that the outer box was not 10 tall, but it was rather 11 tall. Lokasha says the Gemara, that's not a contradiction. Ha, huh, the one who says that it's actually 11 tall, that the outer box of gold was 11 tefach tall. Ha, command Amar Yeshba Ovio tefach, that the, the base of the wood at the bottom was a tefach, why? It was a tefach tall. And therefore, because it was a tefach tall, we had to compensate on the outside size of it, and therefore it had to be 11. That makes perfect sense. So that math works out. Ha, huh? and the shita that holds it was only 10 and a little bit. That's command damar ein bo'ovio tefach, that the floor of the wood of the arun was not at all bo'ovio tefach. It was much thinner than a tefach, which is a couple of good few inches. Well, my mashu, what is this little mashu that says here that the outside box was 10 and a little bit, or 11 and a little bit, as we saw the machlokas and the tanoim here in the brises. So Zagba Gemara's follows, zir, there was a little crown a little decorative uh, a little decorative trim at the top of that um, of that uh, golden box and Amr of Yochanan a third of the way down Ein Beis and Beis Rav Yochanan says Shlosh Azirimhin there were three types of crowns Shel Mizbeach Vishel Aron Vishel Shulchan there was one by the Mizbeach the one inside the base inside the Heichal Vishel Aron we know the one we're talking about now Vishel Shulchan there was also one in the Shulchan Shal Mizbeach, the one that was by the Mizbeach, ha, ha, the Mizbeach HaZohav, that Zohar Aron Unatalo. He merited getting that, and it belongs to him. Shal Shulchan Zohar David Unatalo. The, the one by the Shulchan, that one belongs to David. However, Shal Aron Adayin Munachu Kol Harotze Likach Yavo V'Yikach. Anyone, anyone who wants to take the crown of the Shulchan, they are welcome to it. Of course, this is a metaphor in Kemach in Torah, the shulchan is representative of bread. In fact, we learned some halachic discussions here about what does it mean that there is a mitzvah of tummy 
tummy to learn constantly. So that's a machlokas based on, on not this exact Gemara, but on the discussion of the Shulchan. The Shulchan is representative of Torah. Shema Tomar Pachosu says the Gemara, maybe we would have feared that the uh, the gold decorative trim, but Yes, you're correct. I apologize. The Aron. The Aron. And you just reminded me of a Kliyakar, Allah Parsha. The Kliyakar writes that the reason why the uh, why the eights had to be in the middle of the Aron was because eights Chaim Hilamach Hazikim, but in and of itself was representative of Torah. Erase the last 30 seconds. Thank you very much. So here, the uh, what we were talking about that was uh, everyone at Kola Rosa Likach, Yavav Yikach, that was not talking about the Shulchan, but rather talking about the Aron. Shema Tomar Pachosu. Maybe we should say that the um, that this little golden trim that was uh, by the Aron, maybe we should say pachosu that it's the least meaningful. Tamalomar, no, the malachim yamluchu. Three through me, the kings will rule. Namely, that this is of the most chashuv. The Gemara then asks uh, a, a question, a stira in psukim. It's really not a stira in psukim. It's a stira in kri and ksiv. Rami Reb Yochanan. Reb Yochanan Rami, excuse me. What does he say? Ksiv zar. The pasuk reads zar. How do we read it? We read it as zir or zer, uh, in the Vikarina and zer. So I don't understand which one is it. Zar sounds like a stranger and zer sounds wonderful that it's a crown. It says the Gemara, Zacha, then na say slow zer. If a person was zoche, zoche to what we'll see in a moment, then na say lo zer, then it's created going to be a crown. Lo zacha, but if they did not marry, then zara then they'll become a stranger to it. Take a look at Rashi in the outer margin, four lines from the bottom of the page. Ki Rashi, what does zacha mean? Zacha, lilmo lishma, no big deal. It's really just not, it's not difficult to learn Torah Lishma and to keep it. What does it mean to learn Torah Lishma? You're not learning Torah for the mental gymnastics, though we have certainly done our fair share. You're not learning Torah to feel chashub because that's not what learning Torah is all about. You're learning Torah for one reason, and that is to get a greater tfis on a Kodesh Baruch Hu. If that's what's driving a person to learn, so that's, that, what, that is one shot in, the what, in what the word Lishma means in learning. You're not learning with any ulterior motives. All you want to do is get close to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and therefore you're learning his Torah. You learn how you think, learn how he thinks, and learn how, learn how a Kaddish Baruch Hu wants us to dissect things and psukim. And this all has, goes back to the larger idea of halacha Moshe Misina, that Moshe gave us a Kaddish Baruch Hu's Masorah. That's our Masorah, it's Hashem's Masorah through Moshe. And therefore, zacha nase lo zir, lo zacha zarehimenu, that if one learns lishma, so then it is as though the Torah is a crown to them. And if they did not learn for those purposes, then zarehimenu. Rav Yochanan again, Rami Ksiv, he has a stirim sukim, Sisa Loch Aron Eitz, you should make for yourself a box made out of wood. And then it says, Uksiv Ve'asu in the plural, Aron Atse Shitim. How do we, how do we make these two sukim fit? So it says the Gemar, Mikan the Tamar Chacham, when you have a Tamar Chacham who's represented by the Aron, Shabne Iro Metzuv and Asos Lo Melachto, that they should support him. Not every Tamar Chacham, but the Tamid Chachamim who should be sitting and learning. And it should be uh, the exceptional ones with whom we should be investing our, our dollars and our resources and anything that we can do to support them. Every community needs to have people who are sitting and learning without a doubt. The Gemara continues, that the Aaron has to be coated in gold inside and out. Amar Rava, big Musr, huge Musr. Kol Tamar Chacham, Shein Tocho Kevaro, Eino Tamar Chacham. Anyone who is knowledgeable in Torah, but their insides are not like their outsides. They're playing a game. It's a charade. They're charlatans, really. They just have a lot of information. It's, oh, like you come, I'll pass in a shayla for you. But really, they're not. They're not. They haven't been impacted by the Torah. Then they are not a tamad chacha. Then uh, Abaye takes it a little bit stronger. Abaye be tema raba bar ula nikra nisa. This person from the word toeva. This person is going to is considered abominable. That's terrible behavior. It's not just that you're not a tamad chacha. Abaye takes it further and says you're really a bad person. The word toeva is used a few times throughout halacha, and then none of them are in good cases. So okay, whatever the pasuk speaking about, he's drinking the water, but it's avla. It's bad. So that's a, not a good thing. One should make sure that they're tocho kivar that we try our, I was just talking to someone tonight, we have to make sure we all have Yates hearts. We all fail at things. We have to be honest about that. We don't have to share all of our dark secrets, but we should recognize that we're not perfect and say, we're not perfect and make a mistake. Good. That's very healthy. So that's Toko Kivaro is being, you know, kind of wearing your honesty on your sleeve without all the details. Amar Bishmo Bar Nachmeni, two thirds of the way down, Amar of Yonasan. What does the Pasuk mean when it says, 
He's going to buy, to buy Chachma, but he doesn't have any. So it says the Gemara, The people who are not the Talmud Chachamim, These are people who learn, but they have no desire to have Yirash Shamaim. They have no desire for closeness or, or kurva with the Kodesh Baruch Machriz Rav Yanai Chaval al Deles Darta. It is Chaval for those who don't have a field to protect. Yet still, the tar ledarte avid. Still, they put a gate around this field that doesn't exist. So that is what the Gemara says is the mashal for the sonei and shal for people who are not the talmidei chachamim who are oskin b'torah ba'in ben yirashamayim. A similar reflection where yirashamayim is the protector um, of our learning. We saw this in Masecha Shabbos as well that yirashamayim in in ilolo. The Gemara there says that it's uh, it's what holds everything together. So it's not it's not dvarim pshutim. Only by Moshe Rabbeinu do we say that yirashamayim is milsa zutra sahi. We have to work on that, but uh, that's part of our avoda. Says the Gemara, about 15 lines from the bottom, four lines before the wide lines. We're going to go until three lines before the end of the page. Rava said to the rabbi, said to the Tamil Chachamim in the base Medrash, please, I'm begging you, lo seratun tarte gehenim. Don't doubly earn or inherit teratun, yarshun, tough and shin. Don't doubly inherit gehenim. What is he talking about? Rashi, inner column, top of the page, five lines down, Dibra Maschal tarte gehenim. He says, Liosi game ve amelim betor you don't want to be in this world to work hard and to study and to learn Torah and not to keep it. And then and because of that, one is going to inherit when they die. Even when you were alive. Fascinating idea. You're also supposed to get a Hanan in this world as well. That's also a beautiful idea. We don't believe in asceticism. We don't believe in shutting down the pleasures of the world. We got to strike the balance. Absolutely fine. That's what the Gemara says. Amar of Yeshua ben Levi, my dechsiv, and this may be one of the reasons why we do this in Shul. Why do we, what does this Pasuk mean? Sam Moshe, Asher Sam Moshe. Zacha, if you learn Torah for the right reasons, then Nasi Lo Sam Chaim. Then the Torah that you learn will be an elixir for your life. Lo Zacha Nasi Lo Samisa. Then it will be bad for you. Behind Adam Arava, De Uman Le, when he's expert at it, at learning Torah, then Sam Adachaya, then it's a, then it's the elixir of life. De Lo Uman La, Sam Demosa. And if not, then it's, it's going to be this, the, the drug that will kill you. Two lines into the middle with lines, Amar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, Rabbi Yonah San Rami, Ksiva, contradiction in Pesukim. One Pesuk says, Pikud Hashem Sharm Sam Chaylev, that the mitzvahs that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us, they're beautiful, they make us very happy. We'll see another parse, uh, another uh, Pasuk says, Imras Hashem Tzirufa, the, the phrases, the teachings of Hashem are Tzirufa, Tzirufa, to be a Tzoref, that's like the, is the refinery of metal, it's boiling hot and it removes the impurities from a metal, that's what Tzirufa refers to, so how do we answer this contradiction, one saying that mitzvahs make us happy, the other says that it's a, it's a fire pit, how do we solve that problem, Zacha, if you learn for the right reasons, Mesamachto, the Torah makes you feel Geshmak, Lo Zacha Tzarafto, and if not, then uh, the experience uh, that you're going to have is going to be one like the purification of metal, which is unpleasant. First of the very long lines, we don't have to have a contradiction in terms. Everything, it's not really a stira. If you're Zoha, so then you may go through the challenges of the of removing impurities, but it'll be Lechaim, it'll be Givaldic. But if not, then the process of going of going through this improvement of removing your impurities will be a very bad one and it will lead to Misa. Next Pasuk to analyze. Yiras Hashem Tehora Omedes La'ad. What does this pasuk mean? That the fear of a Kaddish Baruch Hu is pure and it lasts forever. That there's a person who learns Torah B'Tara. What's learning Torah B'Tara? So it says the Gemara Maihi, no se'isha ve'achar kach Torah. One who learns with the calm of the Yetzer Hara, uh, in, uh, where one is more calm after they have uh, an isha ve'achar kach Torah, then they're sitting and learning can be on the level of Tara. Eidus Hashem ne'amona. What does the pasuk mean when it says that a Kaddish Baruch Hu's Torah is, is Eidus? That it's trustworthy to be our aid. Amar Abichia Bar Abba Neemana He Lehei Belom Dea. The Torah is going to say, "I know that this Chaver learned. I know when when there's a Kitruk, we can we we will have an angel upstairs saying, "I know. I know that I learned. I was in Shir. I was learning. Whatever the case may be." My Sirokim, last little sigil for the night. The Pasuk says that it was my Sirokim, that it was made in an embroidery. And the other says, my Sechoshev, it was made with a different Chachma. So it says the Gemara, Amar Rebbe Lazar, Shirokmin b'makam Shechoshmin. You would embroider in the place that you would draw. So first they would create a shape on the, uh, they would draw a shape with stitching lines, and then they would fill it in with embroidery a little bit thicker. Okay, so it says the Gemara, Tana Mishmed Reb Nechemya. Rokim, my Semachat, to do embroidery is stitching with a needle. 
lefikach, uh, because you're stitching with the needle, you can decide how deep into the into the garment you want to go, and therefore parts of echad. That's what we have right here on the parochas. The stitching is only on the outside; it's not on the inside. You can't see it all the way to the other side. But choshev, that is my seorig lefikach shnei partsufos. That type of work. That's the garment itself. The fabric itself was woven in that way. And if you put something on a weave and you put a shape, it's going to show on both sides. And that's what shnei partsufos means. We'll stop right here. Four lines from the bottom. And I in bezim and bezim here to tomorrow. We'll learn daf I and gimel together. Next week I'm out of town. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and Sunday is a fast day, so we have a lot to figure out. Um, I will uh, think it over, speak it over with some of you, and let you know what our next steps are. Wishing you all a beautiful night.